On April 8, 1960, astronomer Frank Drake launched a new era in the search for extraterrestrial civilizations. He sought the first direct evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence by pointing the 85-foot telescope of the National Radio Astronomy Observatory NRAO, in Greenbank, West Virginia, toward two sun-like stars in the galactic neighborhood. Tuning to a frequency of 1,420 megahertz, he hoped to find a universal meeting spot. This frequency is also known by scientists on other worlds as the emission frequency of hydrogen, the universe's most abundant element. Although Drake's Project Ozma experiment did not prove the existence of life beyond Earth, it did stimulate the establishment of a new discipline of science, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI. Since that first experiment, which could only listen in on one frequency at a time, the strength and scope of SETI searches have grown considerably. So, in this video, we'll look at some of the recent discoveries that have shocked everyone. The WOW Signal an astronomer believes he has found the source of a mysterious radio signal from space, a passing comet that no one was aware of. However, his colleagues remain doubtful of the theory, pointing out that comets do not generate radio waves in the unexpected manner. Antonio Paris, an astronomer at St. Petersburg College in Florida, recently published a paper in the Journal of the Washington Academy of Sciences claiming that the mysterious WOW signal, a truly bizarre radio signal detected nearly 40 years ago, appears to match the location of a comet called 266P Christensen that hadn't been catalogued at the time. The comet was spotted much later in 2006. Initially, Paris hypothesized that a second comet, P2008Y Gibbs, could potentially be the culprit. The WOW signal has been explained by anything from natural occurrences to covert spy satellites to, well, aliens. Others are skeptical. We do not believe the two comet theories can explain the WOW signal, according to Jeremy Emmon, the astronomer who found it in 1977. The WOW signal got its name from how unusual and stunning it was. The radio signal first occurred on the night of August 15, 1977, when it was picked up by the Ohio State University's Big E Radio Telescope. It was only 72 seconds long. It was loud, more intense than anything else in the sky that night. It was likewise a signal with a restricted bandwidth. The frequency range it spanned was modest, similar to that of artificial signals. Channels on AM radio, for example, are only 10,000 cycles above or below the prescribed frequency on the dial. Furthermore, the signal had a frequency of around 1,420 megahertz, also known as the 21 centimeter line. That frequency corresponds to radio waves released by neutral hydrogen gas in space. It's a relatively noise-free region that academics looking for extraterrestrial intelligence have been interested in for a long time since it could be utilized for interplanetary transmissions. The signal did not return and additional attempts to locate it were futile. On a printout of the numbers reflecting the signal, Emmons scribbled WOW in red pen. The now dismantled Big Ear Telescope was seeking for alien signals in 1977 as part of an early iteration of the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, or SETI. Nobody anticipated to hear anything like the WOW signal, and the Big Ear Telescope never heard anything like it again. It was hard to tell what it was without a repeat signal, and determining an exact position was difficult due to the signal's brief duration. Emmon stated in a statement that it is difficult to detect how far away a radio signal is originating from after a certain distance. Several astronomers, including Emmon, believe Paris is mistaken about the comet. Emmon examined Paris's findings with Robert Dixon, director of the Ohio State University's radio observatory. The signal did not reoccur, and it only occurred for a brief period of time. The Big Ear Telescope, according to Emmon, has two feed horns, each of which gives a slightly different field of view for a radio telescope. We should have seen the source come through twice in about three minutes, one response lasting 72 seconds, and a second response for 72 seconds following within about a minute and a half, Emmon added. We didn't see the second one. He said that the only way that could happen is if the transmission was abruptly shut off. 
A comet would not emit such a signal since the gases that surround it cover enormous, diffuse areas. The comet would not have escaped the radio telescope's range of vision that quickly. Emin, on the other hand, isn't persuaded it's aliens. Fast radio bursts, FRBs, which are unexplained radio bursts with fiercely discussed astrophysical origins that emit irregular signals that last only milliseconds, are one of the several occurrences that indicate unexpected appearances and disappearances of radio signals. Emin theorised that if the Big Ear only picked up the tail end of such an emission, the data could resemble the wow signal. The issue with the feed horns is something no one can explain, including me, Paris remarked. There is some data out there to suggest the issue is at the telescope end and not the phenomenon itself. As a result, it's probable that the signal was created by a bug in the Big Ear telescope. The frequency of the transmission also presents another problem. Paris claims to have demonstrated that comets can emit in that frequency range, but SETI Institute's senior astronomer Seth Shostak is doubtful. Shostak used to investigate neutral hydrogen emissions in the 1420 MHz band and is still certain the emission would be correct. Comets might not produce enough hydrogen to provide a bright enough signal like wow. I don't think anyone ever found such emission from comets, Shostak remarked. As scientists continue their search for solutions, both the cause and the origin of this phenomenon are still considered to be among the field's most perplexing mysteries. Even the most intelligent humans are having difficulty keeping up with the enigmatic sound signals and frequencies caught by our instruments because the universe is so vast. It is certainly difficult to choose between being a believer or a non-believer in extraterrestrial life when there is very little to no reliable facts concerning the universe's greatest mysteries. Mysterious Space Signal In the year 2020, Intense brief bursts of radio waves were discovered in a fairly regular pattern. Strange transmissions like this from space are known as fast radio bursts. According to Harvard University professor Abraham Loeb, aliens attempting to contact Earth is a distinct possibility. Loeb rose to prominence in the realm of astronomy when a strange interstellar object known as Oumuamua buzzed the Earth in 2017. He proposed that the object was a man-made ship of some kind, implying that it was conceived and built by some form of sentient life. Since then, Loeb's view on news regarding unexplained signals originating from space has become increasingly sought after. To get a signal over to a section of the cosmos detectable by humans, intense bursts from the opposite side of the universe would require a large source of energy. Loeb and his colleague calculated how much energy is required to generate an FRB across cosmological distances. It turns out that the quantity of electricity required is comparable to the amount of power intercepted by the Earth in sunlight. In simpler terms, a project like this would require millions of times the power and resources than any scientist on Earth has ever conceived. It's realistic to presume that current technology is so far behind that a project would take thousands of years to complete. Could this be the aliens' way of demonstrating how powerful they are? Could this be a forewarning or just one of the numerous random and incomprehensible incidents in our strange universe? While the vast majority of people may believe this is simply another hoax extraterrestrial story, a well-known scientist from Harvard believes it would be a mistake to rule out aliens. Although we do not yet have a definitive explanation for what generates FRBs, it is critical that we stay open to possibilities such as extraterrestrials attempting to contact humanity. So what is a plausible explanation for this looping space signal? Loeb believes the powerful signals observed in 2020 are most likely pulsars, which are spinning neutron stars with strong magnetic fields. What exactly are pulsars? Pulsars are evolving neutron stars that have radiation pulses that recur at regular intervals ranging from milliseconds to seconds. While this may be a sensible idea, it is not supported by considerable evidence that may demonstrate its veracity. Whether or not these events are random, one thing is certain. It will take years, if not decades or perhaps centuries, for us to figure out the answer to this puzzle. Mysterious Rocky Planet our cosmos evolved and developed a lot to get where it is today. 
Therefore, it is unusual to find aspects that we know are not that old present in the early days of the universe. We simply did not have all the scientific ingredients that we have now in the early universe. Despite the fact that the components required to produce rocky planets did not exist, astronomers discovered a rocky planet dating back further than expected in the Milky Way galaxy. To recreate this picture, an astronomical timeline is required. The Big Bang created an abundance of the light elements in the cosmos including hydrogen, helium and a lesser amount of lithium. Around 200 million years after the Big Bang, stars began to form and heavier elements such as carbon, oxygen and iron began to form in their cores. Because rocky planets require components from star cores to form, we should not be able to detect rocky planets in the early days of the universe. Instead, these planets should be gaseous like Jupiter. In this study, one planet has been discovered circling TOI 561, a star that is approximately 10 billion years old and one of the oldest in our galaxy. This planet was discovered using the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite and then closely examined using the Keck Telescope. This star is part of the galactic thick disk, a region of the galaxy composed almost entirely of ancient stars, giving it a distinct chemical composition. The stars in the thick disk are substantially less metallic than those in the thin disk, adding to the shock that it is a rocky planet orbiting the star. The planet TOI 561b was discovered when it passed in front of the star it orbits. This procedure temporarily dimmed the star's brightness, allowing the telescope to glimpse the planet lurking just in front of the star. The next step was to acquire information about the planet, which is not only rocky, but also has a mass three times that of the Earth, adding to the evidence that this is a rocky planet, not a gaseous one. TOI 561b is not the only planet orbiting this old star, but the other two have been proved to be gaseous rather than rocky. It may take some time to continue this research and solve this enigma, but it looks that something is different than we now comprehend it, whether it is the timeline of our universe, the composition of this planet, or the ingredients required to form them. Let's hear your thoughts in the comments down below.